All right, so it's been a couple weeks and I want to give you guys some updates on the machine. I also want to show you a few things on the machine that we didn't get to show you last time because the power was on. So I'm going to show you inside of the electrical cabinet. This electrical cabinet is immaculate and I just want to show you, it was kind of one of the sellers for me of why I bought this machine. But there's a few things we weren't able to show you because the power was on. I'm going to show you those things. It was kind of noisy also. Uh, I also have a Mitutoyo CMM project that I'm going to be working on concurrently with this. Got a Mitutoyo CMM for a killer deal and I'm excited to try and get a CMM up and running. Hopefully I don't have two huge paperweights here but I guess that's just part of taking risk and being a business owner. Let me show you the machine, give you some updates on what's going on here, and then I'm going to show you the Mitutoyo CMM project that I have coming. Run into a little bit of headwind, which is normal for me. Kind of what I'm dealing with right now is I have not gotten the spindle to turn. So for some reason, uh, I have a couple of errors that are like related to the chiller and possibly the spindle lube. I've been able to move everything inside of the machine up to this point. Moved the X, moved it in Y, was able to move the uh, A axis, C axis, and everything. I was also able to partially execute a tool change. So the door dropped, the arm swung over, but it never pushed down and flipped around. And I think part of that might be that we're not executing an M19 spindle orientation. So what I need to try and diagnose and figure out is why we're not getting a spindle turning, no spindle orientation. I tried it with the tool in, the tool out. Not sure if it's related to the lube issue on the chiller. So this is my diagnosis. This is kind of my plan of attack for this next upcoming week. I am going to, I got the new lube on the way. So lube for the spindle oil air injector and new lube for the chiller. So new Vela site number three for the chiller. I'm going to drain the chiller because I have, an, I have a filter clogged error on the chiller. So I'm going to drain the chiller, I'm going to put new Vela site in there, and then I'm going to clean the filter on the chiller. I'm also going to take the chiller out and I'm going to try and clean the front um, screen, the heat exchanger on the chiller, spray some degreaser in there just to make sure that it doesn't feel like there's too much resistance or we're not getting you know, air going past the chiller. Hopefully, if we can get those errors cleared and those issues cleared, obviously worst case scenario is that I have to have Okuma come down, take a look at it, diagnose it, and then potentially buy whatever could be related to the spindle issue. When I bought this machine, I was fully planning on there being a few things like this. Now, I don't want a whole laundry list of things that I have to change and then figure out that it's like a super sloppy machine. Obviously, that would be horrible. But... I feel like if I have something related to the spindle and I get the spindle going, that's not that big of a deal. If I start getting into this machine and I can tell that it's like, whoa, this is snowballing like crazy, then we'll just stop. And I don't know, we'll list it and sell it or whatever. But hopefully that won't be the case. Hopefully that, you know, it's just something small that I'm not familiar with. There's a lot to this control, a lot of little nuances. I'm realizing like Okuma programs in a ton of stuff on their machines that's for safety, but it's also kind of cumbersome the way they do it. Like you always have to clear the alarm. You have to turn the control on. There's just a lot of stuff that with my Centroid, it's like, it just runs. With this, there's a lot of alarms to clear. There's a lot of order to do things in, a lot of ladder logic that they've included, which is for safety, which is awesome. Let's take kind of a look around. I'll show you what the shop looks like right now and just kind of what's going on with the machine. So I know last video I made, it was kind of noisy in here. I had a little bit of a light flicker. I don't know if people got to see the machine that well. So I just wanted to show the machine really quick. It's a lot of iron. It's definitely a lot more iron than I'm used to. So what I believe is a 400 millimeter trunnion here. And we have the laser tool setter. If anybody here is familiar with these Renishaw tool setters, comment in the comments and let's have a chat. I'd like to see how you like yours. I've thought about maybe just putting a normal tool setter on here like the plunger style, but I'd love to have a laser if it works. One thing I dislike about this Renishaw laser setter is that it's constantly blowing an airstream. I feel like it's kind of a waste of air and my compressor is constantly running. So I know a lot of shops are used to running air all the time. I'm not used to running a ton of air. I mean, it's, it's like a small air gun spraying all the time. 
So kind of a kind of a heavy lift on the air there. This is the this is the gearbox for the tool arm. The bellows here. I have a bellows that's kind of hanging you down. It's not broken, I don't think. I'm gonna I've already got a way that I'm gonna fix that bellows and we'll make a video of that. So uh, one other upgrade I'd like to do is I really want to put a nice LED light in here. So I'll probably swap this out or put in like some secondary uh, IP68 rated LED lights because I want this thing to be lit up like a Christmas tree inside. I want it to be very bright and very nice to work inside of. I also looked at some different epoxy paint options because I'd like to repaint this and kind of get it back to its original state. I don't know if that's a great idea. If anybody has any experience with good epoxy based paint for machines, I've tried Alkit enamel on my other machines and the Quali Chem eats right through it and turns it into kind of like just a soft goop. So I don't think I want to do an Alkit enamel or any enamel paint. I think I really want to do a two-part epoxy or some kind of epoxy paint that will hopefully hold up to the coolant. I'll be using Quali Chem inside of this machine. This spindle nose is massive. It's, it's just a lot of metal, which is awesome. These machines are built really robust. Let's take a look in the back here. So in the last video, I didn't get to do a very good look at the electrical cabinet because the power was on. I didn't want to have this thing open while the power was on. This is what the panel looks like. And this is part of what sold me on this machine. Everything is still from factory, very clean and not a lot of dust in here. I was just blown away at how clean the cabinet looked. I love that it still has the air filters over the fans. They need to be cleaned, but like when you're looking at the fan blades, there's not a lot of dust on here, which could be a bad thing. I feel like it's been pretty well maintained. Everything has been pretty dust free. And so I was excited about that when I looked inside this machine. Sometimes when you open up these cabinets, there's like that coolant residue inside and it's just a bad sign for me if I see that coolant residue. So a nice clean cabinet. That was, this is obviously the heart of the mill. This is a little more detail on the chip conveyor setup. Obviously the Mayfren that I talked about here has two separate conveyors. There's a big chips conveyor on the top and then the fines conveyor on the bottom. I ended up taking this top guard off. There's usually like a massive guard that goes over this. I don't really mind if these chips come out here. If they like come out with a ton of velocity, obviously that's bad, but I've never understood why there's like a huge thing around this shroud when they're really just gonna come off the top of the conveyor and drop straight down. Hopefully you have a chip bin here. It's gonna take up a little bit of room, but I have room here to walk around. On the side here, this is where the chiller is going to live. This is the, I don't know how you say it, Daikin or Daikin chiller. It's kind of a tall unit and then it's got the Velocite reservoir over on the side. This is kind of what I've been working with, trying to clear the errors on. I want to get this nice and clean, make sure that the filter's clean, make sure that there's a good volume of the Velocite number three coolant in there and just make sure that it's been taken really good care of. On the laundry list is also just lubing all of the lube ports, making sure there's grease on all the ways. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple grease spots up top that I need to grease, so I'll just try and take care of all those things. This is kind of what the machine looks like up top. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of metal, big bellows inside of this. Here is where the spindle, all the spindle actuation and stuff like that happens. But as you can see, there's a ton of routed cable lines, hydraulic lines, and all of that kind of stuff. I'll also be doing an oil change on all of the gear here for the hypoid gear. There's another one up here on the side. Change that out. And just give it nice, fresh, new fluids. Want to make sure that I've done my due diligence there. All right, so this is the Mitsutoyo Bright 710 CMM project. Notice it's my work table for right now. But I got this out of Logan, Utah on a absolute fire sale. And I got two of them. I got a BH710 and a Bright 710. And they came with all of the, the probe and everything. The thing they didn't come with was the controller. So I'm gonna be running CMM Manager on both of these CMMs. Hopefully I can get them up and running. 
This is kind of a video that I have coming in the works. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to call the barn find CMM because it kind of is my barn find CMM. It lived in our barn for about a year until I got enough time to bring it up here. So pretty excited about this. Both of these projects, going to try and get them done this winter. So that's kind of a little shop update. No major progress. Moving all the axes has been progress, obviously, but the tool changer, haven't done a tool change yet. Haven't got an M19 to work yet. Still trying to figure out a couple things with the control, but all in all, still super pumped on this. Uh, I need some snow in Utah so that the golf course closes and I have some time to tinker on this. It's been busy. We've had a, like one of the warmest Novembers that we can remember. So thanks for being here. Another update coming soon. Hopefully we have a spindle working and maybe some chips being cut. We'll see you next time.